And this is what uh, Nikki Nikki Haley's speech looks like. It got even em- somehow it became even emptier as the day as the day dragged on as CPAC continued on. I think they had what like 30, 40 speakers or something. A lot of people, a lot of people nobody cared about who were there. And it seemed like nobody just wanted to see them at all. It's re- it's remarkable. What's going on everybody? I hope you brought your popcorn because did you hear? The circus is in town. You're right. You're right. You're right. The circus is in town. You heard me right. CPAC is back. Everybody's favorite clown show uh, where the biggest and baddest conservatives from all across the country and even the world this time all gather in one very well-known enclosed space for extended periods of time to talk about how they would like to make the world a worse place. And this time, I didn't care about covering it live, mostly because we had other things to do and because I was sick. But it seems like not only did I not really care what was going on at CPAC, it seems like even the people who typically would go to CPAC don't even care about what was happening at CPAC because I was sent this incredibly interesting thing. It was actually held in uh, Washington, D.C., And then in Maryland, somebody caught this Craigslist post. Wanted conference attendees, stand-ins. Hey, y'all, I'm a public relations specialist, and I've been assigned to fill empty capacity for a major conference being held in National Harbor this week, as well as a filling up event uh, events spilled into the weekend. There will be major guests at this event, and it's perfect for everyone who loves freedom, God, and country to apply. Please respond to this ad. We're paying seven to twelve dollars an hour. Whoa! I don't even think that's the. I I think twelve is the minimum wage in Washington D.C. I'm gonna be honest, but okay. For um, so seven is way below that. For uh, attendance members, this includes a free ticket to the concert uh, to the conference worth up to twenty nine thousand dollars. Sheesh! Isn't seven twenty five federal minimum? Yeah, you're right. They would, the lowest here is literally below the federal minimum wage. (laughs) Hey, listen, it's a gig, not a job. Go get one of them yourself, which, which is honestly incredibly hilarious. But what's also hilarious is that apparently grinder usage spiked when, um, when, when CPAC was in town, as you can see here, just normal amounts of homosexuality, maybe a little bit more than average in DC. And then the weekend came and then boom, looks like a lot of uh, other things came as well. Interesting how that works. Interesting. Interesting. Yo, can you imagine being at CPAC and then you, um, and you're a gay homosexual or you're a closeted, um, homo gay. And then you check your phone and you check a grinder while you're in the bathroom. And like, there's like 50 profiles and they all say, um, one feet, a hundred feet away from you. (laughs) And you're like, um, <laughs> inch, yeah, it's like one inch away from you. <laughs> um, uh, Tampa, Tampa Bay gay prostitutes gearing up for flood of closet Republicans. <laughs> oh yeah, they what they gotta they gotta prepare. They gotta do extra extra preparations. I heard them boys get rough. Five feet to your right, next stall. The oddly shaped hole. Wait, hang on. O'Keefe, is that you? But outside of that, um, I'm not joking that almost nobody went to CPAC. Here's a real picture that was taken at CPAC while and you may and people may be like, hey, listen, listen. Nobody important must be talking. That's the reason why nobody's there. They just got up to go do something else. No. This, this is Don Jr. speaking. This is Donald Trump Jr. speaking in Washington, D.C. In D.C. All the Republicans, well, obviously there aren't that many Republicans in D.C., but like it's easy to get people to D.C. from Virginia or Maryland. Is he important? They, they, the uh, Trump, Trumpites loved him while they were in office. Not much really anymore, but Trumpites love this guy. It's getting so bad. They started to like pack up some chairs because they're like, we might as well put these back while we still have the chance. (laughs) 
Look at this place. There's a ghost town in here. Live on stage. Can't, uh, can't get anything. That's crazy. Hilarious. And they're obviously having a normal one. Would you look at that? Me get, get breaking Trump, breaking Trump news. Ah, uh, yes. King Trump is here. We love him. All right. It seems like the sycophant um, crowd has thinned out a bit, but it hasn't changed. But there being less of them and them being less um, righteous is definitely something else. Yeah, my man did turn into the whole Burger King. Bugar King. Burger 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 King. We got big burgers, the best burgers. And now, now let's take a look at some of the stuff that's going on. Oh, so just to, just to be clear, I wanted to take a look at some highlights from CPAC. There's no way you can get me to watch. Dude, conservatives didn't even want to watch CPAC. What makes you think I do? So we're just going to be looking at some, a bunch of fun clips from CPAC. The best ones that I've been able to pick out to curate for you guys that are at least somewhat worth watching to at least have a little bit of fun with. So take a look at this. Yep. Let me ask you, Ian, bathrooms. I'm just say that one word. <laughs> bathrooms. I'm gonna let you just well, go. You know. Yep. Listen, one word. Bathrooms. Oh, buddy, the most pressing matter to Americans right now, while a war that's threatening to break out and engulf Europe is happening. Hey guys, did you know about um? Did you hear? Did you hear that they want to uh, put PP havers? in bathrooms crazy right can you imagine what yo what she said it bathrooms she said it oh and some fun stuff from uh from cornyn there were places in america over the last few years where you couldn't go to church on sunday because some democrat governor democrat mayor said no you can't do it the, the, I, I always tell the story i spoke to the new mexico republican why is he standing like that look at him is he okay does he see something is his wife cheating at, uh, like on him in the back of the in the back row or something like what's going on? Is it wait is, are, are like the seats back there? Are they like um, is, is it like when you go to a theater with your with with your date and you can do some um, some uncouth things in the very back seat? So they're just like a back back way back there. Just feeling each other up and he's like, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> that boo is soundboard material boo <laughs> hey you couldn't go to hey on sunday you couldn't go to church well you could go to church you just couldn't go into the building i wonder what was happening uh the peak of something that was happening two years ago that would make it so that people wouldn't want to want people to congregate in large numbers uh in places i wonder what was happening crazy can party in Amarillo, Texas, a couple years ago, because their Democrat governor wouldn't let them get together, wouldn't let them assemble in their own darn state. They had to go to Texas to get freedom. There were in Texas. We need freedom. We need it. Oh yeah, here we go. Ah, some good stuff from this is a real sitting congressman. Okay. Americans do not deserve to be governed by deeply weird, nauseously woke people who hate George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, Dr. Zeus, and Mr. Potato Head. Dr. Zeus? Dr. Zeus? Hello? <laughs> Dr. Zeus? He's calling down. He got dang lightning on us, bro. It's so over. You don't get it. It's so over. And I love, I love how he puts all of those people. Wait, oh, my bad. He's not even done. Dr. Zeus and Mr. Potato Head. I just love how he puts them all together like they're the great saviors of America. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Dr. Seuss, and, uh, and Mr. Potato Head. All three, they built America, okay? Without America, where would we be? Nowhere, actually. Who hyperventilate on their yoga mats if you use the wrong yoga pronoun. Women, am I right? Who think kids should be able to change their gender at recess. <laughs> who carry around Ziploc bags of kale to give them energy. <laughs> and who think they are better than us. It's just, this is, is this a mental illness? Just to know. 
Is this like a mental illness? That it's I I never knew I like I never knew the whole giving kids like baby carrots uh for Halloween instead of candy turned into a political statement. They literally turned anything into a political statement. Hey guys, instead of giving kids um uh, copious amounts of sugar, fat, and carbs all day, uh, what if we give them uh I don't know vegetables? I can't I can't believe you've done this, huh? You think you think you're some sort of god dang gone darn god darn dang god dang tootin' freaking kale to my god dang gone darn 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 uh, darn kid? What is he a freaking rabbit? I know you people and your gender get all mixed up, but I tell you what, this is a school, not a zoo. You you but you you better give me back my gas stove and my Mr. Potato Head. You better put that black girl back on that uh <laughs> that syrup. And you better put the and you better put the happy yellow man back in the Dr. Zeus book. I tell you what. You can you can poop you can boom boom in your litter boxes all you want as long as I get out of here. Gone don darn it. I'm gonna take my daughter on a date. You wanna take my blonde haired Daisy Duke and daughter on a date? Show me a penis. I was about to put the floor right in the toothpaste. Why they be wasting all that fluoride on Too Fast? My grandpappy ain't got no teeth. What he need fluoride for? <laughs> <laughs> Running around your who's he what's in mobiles. Huff some diesel and drink a road beer like a real American. <laughs> Merrick, I'm sorry. I love your culture, okay? I love Texas. That's why I love John Cornyn. My bad. This, this isn't Texas. This is, uh, <laughs> this is the... This is the uh, Louisiana Senator. Uh, let's see what our good friend um, Don Jr. was uh, saying to the empty crowd. And when I said, like, I don't know, it's sort of weird that Pennsylvania managed to elect a vegetable. <laughs> they criticized me as being ableist. I didn't know what that was, but there's always an ist, right? There's, a, there's always an ist, and it doesn't matter what you're talking about. I, I clowned on, my, on the minority for his, uh, uh, I, I clowned on somebody for his disability status. And they're like, you're messing with him for his disability. And I'm like, I didn't even know that was possible. And apparently an ableist is someone who discriminates against those with disabilities. And I said, well, I'm not discriminating against an ableist. I'd love for John Fetterman to have like good gainful employment. Maybe he could be like a bad guy at like a grocery store or, but like. Nice one. Hey, oh, you have heart problems. <laughs> this is incredible coming from a guy who smokes like this is incredible coming from a guy whose like favorite sweet is nose candy. This is remarkable to me. Sniffy Don, always huffing on something to be able to get on stage. Yeah, okay, buddy. Sure, sure, sir. You are a coke addict, and they're poor too. But we'll, we'll get to that. We'll see what his girlfriend's been up to because I, I got something for her too. Don't worry about it. Is it unreasonable for me to expect as a citizen of the United States of America to have good, good Lord, that's so great. I'd be I'd be so sad if I thought of myself as like um as like the the silent majority. Apparently the silent apparently the majority is not only silent, it's also invisible. I got jokes too. Mr. Junior. If you because all of these people want to uh, all of these dudes want to make this into like a stand-up bit. I hate how conservatives are like, oh, the right's getting better at comedy. And so every single time they go up on stage, they have to make like a little comedy bit. But always, it's always the most cringe shit you've ever seen in your entire life. I, I got, we got jokes too, buddy. Don't worry about it. Have a United States senator have basic cognitive function. Okay. <laughs> Talk to your dad next time. Through soccer camp and soccer practice, rather than fund Whoops. those businesses that support your values. Put their kids through soccer camp and soccer practice, rather than funding, you know, what is it, 10-month uh, abortions. You know, some of the insanity that we see on the other side. They get 10-month abortions. Hey, listen, he's, listen, okay, remember, you know how you ask these people, do you think this is a human being when you show them a fetus, but it's actually like, not a human fetus, it's a, it's a dolphin fetus. He actually got it mixed up in his head again. He was thinking of an elephant fetus. As you see, elephants have a much longer gestation period than, uh, than humans do. So in that case, it does make sense. Last time he got uh, fooled, it was actually an elephant fetus, so he had to look it up. So yeah, the, 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 those, those darn 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 it, 10-month elephant abortions 
are really destroying our country and they need to stop. That's killing it. If it yeah, a 10 month abortion, bro, that's called murder. <laughs> we, but we already have a word for that, brother. I don't think you understand. I don't think you get it. Anyways, moving on. Let's see, let's hear some more fucking cringe from uh from our good friends across the aisle. What's this one? Jim's the goat. Jim's the LeBron James of the of the House Republican Conference. I've died. I've died of cringe. I'm sorry, guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. My. <coughs> Change the world. <laughs> My final message. Uh, goodbye. Uh, it's just <laughs> you know, Jim Jordan. Uh, he's kind of like the LeBron James of not reporting sexual misconduct in his school. You ever think about it? He's always there with a slam dunk. You know, Jim Jordan. He's kind of like the Kobe Bryant. Of misogyny, he's always got his eyes on the ball. I uh, and Jim gets more words per minute in than I do. I don't know if anybody's <laughs> noticed that, but Jim's nice one. I've never heard of this guy in my life. He's like one of the only Republicans from Colorado. Oh, I want to watch this one. Oh, Gilfoyle. Now, Gilfoyle, she's been on like a bit of a downturn ever since she had her whole "the best is yet to come" bit. Uh, at, at, at CPAC a while ago. She hasn't really been able to top anything like that. And uh, as you can see here, but at least when it comes to stupidity, she may be able to top herself. And their willing allies in the media are hell bent on taking their far left agenda mainstream. And frankly, destroying all of our lives. But we're not going to let them do it, are we? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Lord, there's like five people there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, they're just, they're, they're on, they're on TV, they're on Twitter.com, and they say that I stink, and we're not gonna put up with it, they're destroying my life, but we're not gonna let it happen anymore, woo, yeah, woo, <laughs> and one of them's, you know, this is her mom, good lord. This shit is embarrassing. This shit is embarrassing. Yo! I'm... Yo, dude! That's crazy! All the seats are empty. And the, like, 10% that aren't... Like, half of the people are just on their phones. They're not even caring. Is that Fuentes? No, that's not Fuentes. Fuentes tried to go. They kicked his ass out. Like, like what always happens. He always shows up, causes a scene, pisses himself, and then gets kicked out. And then that's it. He does it every single time there's like a Republican event. He's blacklisted at all of them. So no, he did not make it in. It's crazy. It's, it's really bad. For Donald Trump, it was a time for success. A vision for a better future. A whole lot of hope. And a whole heck of a lot of winning. Are you tired of winning? No, we want Trump back. Let's be honest. But the <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there was a whole lot of Trump and a whole lot of winning. You tired of winning? No, actually, we've been losing. We've we've been losing a lot. I really want. Please, Trump, come back. Please, if he doesn't win, I don't know what to do. That is desperate. He she didn't even allow the audience to answer. She was like, are you tired of winning? No, no, actually we've been losing a lot. That's crazy. A lot of winning. Are you tired of winning? No, we want Trump back. Let's be honest. But the Democrats, big tech and the media would rather see. <laughs> this is so depressing. <laughs> imagine, dude, imagine being a conservative. Can you imagine before CPAC? You're like, you know what guys, maybe we can take back the Senate. You know what, guys? Maybe we can really win in, in 2024. And then you see this and you're heartbreaking, crushing. Imagine all of the rights that you, were, that you were going to take away from minorities, dashed, all because these are the type of people 
who's who's running the show. That is so sad. My goodness. Yikes. Anyways, more conservatives having a normal one talking about what they would like to do to reporters. It looks like. Oh, I know what I, I look. I, I identify the opponent. I identify the enemy. And that's what the media is. I remember being. I identify as an enemy. In the Gulf War. That was back when America won wars. Uh, and our. And the Pentagon knew which bathroom to use. Um, Got him. <laughs> I remember we're out in the, of the desert. Sergeant uh, comes up to me and goes, oh, Sir, uh, if we have any reporters around, can I shoot them? <laughs> and of course, well, I was a good officer. I always yeah. listen to my NCOs. Um, <laughs> but no, I, you're not advocating that anybody would. No, 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 no. So I was in the military, and uh, reporters were documenting our things to make sure we weren't committing. Uh, horrible inhuman war crimes against the Geneva Convention. And my guy was like, if those reporters are around, can I kill them? I disavow, I disavow. I wouldn't, I wouldn't kill them. What? You know how much paperwork we'd have to do? Hey, hey, I love murdering my... The left is so violent. Did you know that? They're so violent. They're crazy. Why would they do that? No, 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 no. I would never advocate hunting the media for sport. There's already an article breaking. Kurt yeah, exactly. <laughs> breaking. Kurt Redden 30 years ago. Um, he's just, dude, the, he's not even getting any laughs. Everybody's just like, oh, oh, gee, oh, you don't, oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> Anti-sexual harassment, even, many people have said. Oh, yeah. And then uh, my boy, Representative Mark Green, goes on about cop kryptonite. Here, listen to this one. Every American in our country is at risk for this. Uh, you, you pick up a dollar that's got fentanyl on it, and you're dead. Look, every American. <laughs> yeah. Listen. You could be having a great day. Perfect one. See a dollar bill on the floor. Pick it up. <laughs> and it's over. Just like that. Listen, fentanyl is so bad. Have you seen those videos? Cops look at somebody who took fentanyl three days ago, and they're the second they try and put handcuffs on them, instantly dead. Instantly dead. There's like shh, <laughs> cop pocket sand. You can take them out. Just like that. You died. I heard the criminals are now going into. I heard. I heard the criminals have started to. Pretend that they're a transgender. They've started to put, they've started. I've, I heard that, that the criminals, drug dealers had started to say that they're woman by putting on a skirt and walking into the real woman's restroom and smearing the toilet seats full of fentanyl. So that when the girlies go to sit down to go take their, their daily piss, they absorb fentanyl through their ass crack. And if, I'm not sure if you've known, but the colon is one of the quickest ways for a substance to get into your bloodstream. It either kills them instantly or makes them hooked immediately. It's got to stop. Just so you know, this idea is going to be on Joe Rogan sometime soon. Joe's going to be somebody that like, there's going to be like a, a small moment of, uh, of like, dead air in a Joe Rogan podcast within the next week. And he's going to be like, yeah, that's crazy, man. Hey, do you hear that criminals have started to dress up like women to go into women's restrooms to smear the seeds in fentanyl so the girls can soak up fentanyl through their ass cracks? Hey, did you know that like criminals have started to dress up like women so they don't look suspicious going into the uh, a women's hygiene aisle in Walmart and they've started to inject fentanyl through the packages and into tampons so women soak up fentanyl through their pussy um, and become hooked on it. Um, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's, a, it, it's absolutely wild. Why would pe people be using fentanyl like this? Why wouldn't they? Fentanussy. No, not the fentanussy. Why? <laughs> it's true. It happened to me. Merrick, no. Guys, um, one like equals one prayer for Merrick. <laughs> I voted fentanyl. I, did you guys hear that the girls have started to vab after they, um, after they drop in 
<laughs> the girls have started to vab after they plug in the fentanyl uh, tampon. It's crazy. That's how they. That's how drug. De- that's how drug dealers have started to um, incorporate women into their evil schemes. The girls, they take their. <laughs> they take fentanyl and they put it on their tampons, and they take the tampons and they put it in the vagoober. And then afterwards, at the end of the day, they dab, they vab with their, uh, with their fentanyl mixed discharge. And then they put it on their neck. And then when you go to give them a hug, when you think that it's just their natural, beautiful woman pheromones, it's actually mixed with fentanyl, micro dosing fent to you, slowly hooking you on their demon drug. It's a crazy world out there. It's a horrible world out there. Yeah, it is cursed. Fentanyl. It is a curse on our nation. I'm glad somebody sees it. Just like how this guy's a curse on our nation, too. Lifetime, and, and I'm sick and tired of hearing about the family separation. And you know, I'm still being sued over that, so come get me. I don't give a shit, right? <laughs> Bottom line is... Woo, I hate families. We enforce the law. American families... When I was a cop in New York, and I arrested a father for domestic violence or someone for DUI, I separated that family. When you violate the law with a child, you're going to be separated. But you're right. 200... Why? They're crossing the border. A lot of these people haven't even committed crimes yet. And you're separating the family. You don't know if they've committed a crime. What are you talking about? What are you saying? (laughs) And what family gets separated over DUI? What are you saying? Average cop doesn't care about families. Color me shocked. Color me shocked, honestly. Ah, and now we get to Riptide Rick. I remember Tom Hooman. He had a meltdown over ICE detention centers being called. Oh, yeah, it was that guy. He, like, he was shitting himself because ICE detention centers that were, like, torturing human beings and feeding and force-feeding Muslims pork and separating families at the border and killing and assaulting children were... He got mad that they were being called concentration camps, even though the death rate in them was just wildly high. And the fact that they're literally concentration camps. But, you know, whatever, I guess. It's not like facts ever stop these guys from spitting their garbage. It will not to work. So you destroy our country's work ethic. You'd use the Department of Justice, the FBI, the DOJ, IRS to target political... Is this the only group of people in the entire building? Opponents, just like any good fascist regime would do. He's slurring. Holy crap. And, of crap. course, you'd have to allow our public schools to ignore... <laughs> parents and talk to very one young children about sexuality instead of reading sexuality and arithmetic you would stop prosecuting criminals you wouldn't punish criminals so that crime could become rampant all across the country you'd make our military leaders wage war on pronouns instead no. of staring the scaring the crap out of our enemies is this guy okay like i've heard rick talk before he's usually not slurring this much there's something there's something going on here right i'm not sure if i have any people from florida but he doesn't usually talk like this right the the pronouns are killing the country our military yeah i didn't know they were still mad about like mark meadows saying that he's read the communist manifesto so he understands political like because like he was like i like reading about people who i disagree with so i understand What's going on? No! You think Gilfoyle vabbed up the mic with her, um, with her fentanyl drippy? And so now everybody else who stands up there, they just slowly get uh, more and more micro-dosed fentanyl while they're, while they're talking, the longer their speeches. Holy shit. That's crazy. I feel, I feel so bad for him. I've been making fun of him this whole time, but it's actually, but he's actually getting drugged. The communist manifesto is so sad. It's so sad. Who? Everybody in Washington said I'm nuts. I might be. But we cannot put up with this BS anymore. I might be. They say I'm nuts. I might be. So true. Said I'm nuts. I might be. Please laugh. Please clap. Please clap. Uh, but you know you can't. But you know. 
You can't have a CPAC without Morjury. You gotta have Morjury. You can't, you can't have a CPAC without Morjury. Are you crazy? So of course she's there. And of course, honestly, the crowd loved her. So last Congress, I did something radical and extreme because remember Marjorie Taylor Greene, she's so extreme. <laughs> this meme is very real. I introduced a bill called the Protect Children's Innocence Act. Protect Children's Innocence Act. And let me tell you my great news this morning, ladies. It's an anti-trans, it's, it's an anti-trans bill that she put together herself. Ladies and gentlemen, it couldn't pass last Congress because like I said, Nancy Pelosi was the Speaker of the House and she doesn't believe in gender at all. <laughs> but we have a new Speaker in our Republican majority in the House of Representatives. <laughs> and I'm going to be introducing my bill, the Protect Children's Innocence Act, that will make it a felony to perform anything to do with gender affirming care on children. So yeah, this is Marjorie's goal is to ban trans healthcare across the entire country, um, unilaterally. That's her, that's her big dream, is to completely ban uh, all trans healthcare, which is disgusting and terrible and i'm not sure if that could pass i'm not even sure if it could pass if i'm going to be honest with you there'd have to be a lot of things going their way for something like that to pass especially speaking as they were barely even able to get they're barely they weren't even able to get like obama care taken away and they all hate that it's really difficult to do things like that on a national level i love states rights yeah states rights i love states rights anyways Anyways, we hate all of you and you want and we want you to suffer. Normally. With the and and she says it with the demon smile as well. States rights to do what? To do what? Wait, there's one more from Mordry. To saying and while I'm still committed to saying no money to Ukraine and that country needs to find peace, not war. I'm so smart. What if people who are at war just kind of like don't? Have we thought about that? Have we thought of like, imagine all the people. <laughs> have, have Putin and Zelensky ever thought about, do, is there, a, is there a, a Russian translation for, uh, for imagine? Because that's what we need. That's what, we're, that, that's what'll do it. That's what I think. POV, I'm very stupid. look at a camera and directly tell Zelensky you better leave your hands off of our sons and daughters because they're not dying over there okay all right so this here this is from I'm, I'm not sure if people know but this is from a chopped up edited clip of Zelensky saying that if the west doesn't help with what Russia is doing and Russia takes Ukraine that the next countries that he's going to be threatening are going to be NATO countries. And if NATO countries get into a war with Russia, the United States is contractually obligated to step in and do something. So instead of our sons and daughters being here, your sons and daughters are going to be here. So help us win this war. And somebody edited it to say, uh, to have they basically made like a Republican YouTube poop um, that they actually fell for that said that that was like making Zelensky seem like he's saying, I will make sure that your children die in my war. Mohaha. And then all the Republicans went, this guy's crazy. It, it was it's very stupid. So if you ever wonder if like a conservative says this, remember that they fell for a fucking like low IQ YouTube poop of like a highly edited deceptive clip made to fool like losers like them. They're very stupid. What, what strikes me about this opportunity to be here at CPAC talking about this issue of transgenderism. Uh, we'll get back to that actually. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to this transgenderism thing. Uh, not at the moment, but it's, it's something that I think you should probably know about. Anyways, Let's let's talk a little bit about our good friend um, and not friend to anybody in the conference, it seems. 
uh, Nikki Haley, who's running for uh, who's running for president against Donald Trump and for some reason genuinely thinks she can win. Joe and Kamala even say that America's racist. What? Joe and Kamala even say that America's racist. Kamala? Joe and Kamala? I've never, I've never heard Kamala Harris's name like that before, but okay. Wokeness is a virus more dangerous than any pandemic hands down. I have traveled the world wow. and back. Wow, really? Really? Wokeness has killed a million, like, wokeness has killed millions of people across, five, six million people across the world? That's crazy. I didn't know wokeness was so powerful. But also, wokeness is when, um, is when, um, uh, Antifa super soldier, um, communist neat, uh, loser lives in his mom's basement and also owns an AR, but also is incredibly weak and cringe. And it has like, is scrawny and it drinks soy and is trans and injects testosterone into his dick hole. Haha, <laughs> fuck you. But they're also incredibly strong demon force propped up by the most powerful institutions in our entire world to d destroy everything that we own and have. We've already lost. We're looking for refuge for anything that we can salvage left. But also, they drink Soylent cringe. What? Uh, oh, oh, what are you going to do? Uh, pass the gas station because you have an electric car? Oh, I bet you're... Oh, did nice have fun with your um toy car, loser. Nice one. And I've seen what's out there. America isn't perfect, but the principles at the heart of America are perfect. And take it from me. The first minority no female governor in history. America is not a racist country. So true. So true, dude. You got her. If racism, then why Kamala Harris? Anybody ever think about that? They would have just simply murdered Kamala Harris if we were actually racist. She would simply just be dead. If the country was racist, black people wouldn't exist in the country because they'd just simply all be dead. But since we didn't kill all the black people, how could we be racist? Come on. Think with your noodle. Come on. Think, come on. Think with your noodle. Wait, I want to see her empty seats. Oh, it's even emptier than normal. With the, even the grandmas are leaving. It's bingo night. She's like, I can't, I can't hold out for this. Oh my goodness, it's so bad. And while CPAC was going on, good, good friend and Gitmo torturer, DeSantis, um, decided to do DeSantis things. Uh, he fired the, he fired the person who was like overseeing the Disney, uh, oversight board. And he replaced them with a person who, I'm not joking, thinks tap water turns you gay. Remember how we were joking earlier that the reason why there are so many homo boys in Atlanta is because they, they have gay rainwater? It's, it's true. He genuinely, the tap, oh, I get it. Florida is south of Georgia. So what happens is the gay rainwater runs off of Atlanta and then it seeps into Florida reservoirs and then it fills their like their water storage and then so like Floridians are unfortunately getting like gay backwash water from Atlanta I see it you know what actually is starting to make it start is totally starting to make sense it's actually all starting to come together coincidence I think not I think not actually it seems incredible. It seemed to make sense. It's just such a joke. It's genuinely ridiculous. It's genuinely some of the lowest IQ stuff I've seen in my entire life. But hey, it happens. And this is what uh, Nikki, Nikki Haley's speech looks like. It got even em somehow it became even emptier as the day as the day dragged on as CPAC continued on. I think they had what, like 30, 40 speakers or something. A lot of people, a lot of people nobody cared about who were there. And it seemed like nobody just wanted to see them at all. It's, it's remarkable. Anyways, 
Let's hear what this lady has to say. 50 different genders and sexualities. You got pronouns. Uh, hey, my, uh, my gender is, uh, fuck you. My pronouns are kiss my ass. Hey, I love comedy. I love comedy. It's too much for kids to handle. No child should be learning about anything sexual from a teacher, period. Sexuality is not sexual. I don't think you know what that means. Sex ed is important and children need it. It's good for them. When you see a conservative saying that children don't need sex ed, remember that sex ed has a proven, is proven to reduce the likelihood of children being abused and increase the likelihood of people who abuse children to be caught by police because children know what's, ha going to, what's happening to them and they know what's wrong. But hey, listen, keeping the kids in the dark about it, well, it can save some of their asses. But, but that'll, that's something that we can talk about in another time. It does help prevent SA. That is true. I want, my, I want a my pronouns are fuck you shirt. My gender is kiss my ass. My pronouns are uh, fuck you. My, my gender is uh, kiss my ass. <laughs> hey, do you remember Ben Carson? I know some of you don't remember Ben Carson. I barely remembered Ben Carson. But Ben Carson somehow is still alive. I'm not going to lie to you. I genuinely thought this bro died. I thought he died. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought he was dead. Apparently he's not, but Sleepy Ben, he's still around. And um, apparently he's been talk he talked so slow that they tried to get him off stage for five minutes, but he just wasn't paying attention to the music and just kept rambling for five minutes as they were trying to get like, hey, buddy, time's up. Hey, buddy. Think of Herman Cain. Oh, yeah, you're right. I think all old, stupid black people look the same. I'm sorry. College students, young staffers, what you need to know about the government so that you don't have to, so that you can hit the ground running because we need to get these people in because 90% of the, of the career employees are people who live in this area, who have the politics of this area, who slow things down, who push things forward. We've got to be able to do much better than that by understanding this process. So that's what the EBA is all about. And this will help us to He's still going. And answer the question, which Benjamin Franklin said, if we can keep it. It's a wonderful system that we have. Don't let anybody tell you anything that's different from that. But we're the ones who are going to have to do it. it he's been going know, on for so keep... long, the music just restarted. <laughs> they, the music's looping. <laughs> they have to play the start of the song again. <laughs> Find a World War II veteran and ask them what was going through their head yep. and uh -huh. D-Day when they are on the shores of Normandy. Yep, so true. All of those people Thank you, Grandpa. Shot, and they stepped over those dead bodies knowing in many cases they would never see their loved ones or their homeland again. Why did they do it? They did it for you and me so that we could live in peace and safety. We have Ask to step over dead bodies. We can keep it. We can with all of us. Thank you so much. Hey, he's done. They actually got him out of there. All right, Dr. Ben Carson. Um, uh, a, a good speech, a good solid speech, one that uh, folks seem to enjoy. However, it could, it's not lost on myself or Tom Basile, who joins us right now, who's the host of America right now. Um, it, it, that Why does this guy look like he's from like a live action Dr. Seuss movie? What in the world? Look at that hair. That's crazy. That thing looks like it pops on like Lego hair. What in the world? What is happening? This guy looks this guy looks like his he has like two like fishing hooks pulling his uh pulling his smile. He looks like a wax statue. He does. He looks like a smaller man wearing a larger man's skin as a suit. Bro looks AI generated. I could get this I could get this shit with a good prompt and stable diffusion. He looks like Patrick Bateman's um younger, more rapey brother. Anyways. They were playing the music. I mean, they're behind. Yeah. That's not his fault. Yeah, right? no, they're it's behind anyway. No, it's not. Uh, so it's not. And, and I felt a little bad for him because how can you not like Ben Carson? I don't I, care whether you vote for him or not. He I, seems. I, I, they they really wanted to get him out of there. They really don't want him to talk anymore. <laughs> That's crazy.
you're telling me bro rambled on for 30 minutes and then they were like and and went like five minutes over time and they wanted him to leave that's crazy that's crazy but it's time to get to some real kind of insane stuff let's uh let's let's you, you guys want a blast from the past it's only been three years you know what that means it's time to talk about tw- the 2020 election again. Oh, you thought that uh, you thought that that was over, huh? You thought the 2020 election was over? It's never over. It's never over, and it will never be over because they're reliving it. Interest rate, the interest rate, the ten-year Treasury at in the evening of three November when Fox News illegitimately called it for the opposition and not Donald J. Trump. Interest rate. I can't believe it's so weird to me that they think that like calling an election means anything. Who cares if you call an election? Calling an election doesn't do anything. Voting is over. What do you think that like the people in in, in like the counting booths are like counting and counting and counting? And then like CNN calls a state and they're like, oh, I guess that's who won. And then they just pack up and go home or something. What are you talking about? Murdoch decides who's president. I know, right? It's wild. How could they do? How could they do this to us? Economically and financially in this country, more important, your sons and daughters are going to die on foreign battlefields. Are you prepared for that? Do you support that? I can't hear you. Do you support it or not? Because if you don't stand up and fight it, it's going to happen. Once again, all of these guys were baited in by like a by a Republican YouTube poop of Zelensky, which is crazy how quickly and easily these all of these people fall for like the simplest amount of propaganda. It's crazy. It took like three cuts and they are like, oh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Oh, yeah, that's it. Stupidity. Talk about the geopolitical. What if you had re- the what? Let's let's talk about the geopolitical. My man's trying out for the new for corn. Talk about the geopolitical. What if you had respect for people? Wouldn't you do that? They don't respect you. Read the depositions. The deposition. They have a fear, a loathing, and contempt for you. And you are the ones that can make changes. Just so you know, he's talking about Fox News. He's talking about the depositions where Fox News talked about how they knew that they were lying about um, how they knew they were that they were lying about the election fraud stuff, but they decided to play it anyways. On top of that, there were depositions by Rupert Murdoch and um, other Republican talking heads on. I think Laura Ingram and Sean Hannity were two of them. My bad. There were there were two people who were d- who were doing reporting that night. I forget their names, but they were on the stand as well, and they testified that. They talked to Rupert Murdoch and they saw that and they knew that like calling Arizona for Biden, even though it was the right call and that there was no possible way that Trump could like make up the points. They talked to Rupert Murdoch and they said, hey, can we like uncall Arizona? Can we just like say, oops, we made a mistake and like uncall Arizona? Because if they don't. We're, we're they're going to get mad at us and they may not watch the show anymore. So we may just have to like show them what they want to see instead of the truth, which was crazy, which was crazy. Yeah, they they asked, they were like, hey, can we just lie? They were thinking about just like live on air. The executives were like, should we uncall Arizona? Because they saw the Republicans were getting really mad about them saying that there's no way Donald Trump could win, even though he couldn't win like they controlled the election or something. It's crazy. See, he was just he just wanted he just simply wanted to lie. They decided not to and and to keep the reporting and stand by it. But the fact that they literally wanted to bow to bow from factual reporting, bow from factual reporting simply to make the Republican base of their audience happy is I like. I, I don't I think they should get their like I think they should get all of their news licenses taken away if I'm going to be completely honest with you it's proof that they don't know what they're it's proof that they're not real news no news outlet should ever be able to do that then yeah, they call us delusional they call us delusional oh yeah and then there's this guy I I actually don't know who this guy is but I think he may be he may be getting propped up as like a new sort of like conservative minority rising star or something 
I wrote Woke Inc. I wrote Nation of Victims. I traveled the country calling out the woke industrial complex in America. He looks like... You know what he looks like? He looks like his, his name... He looks like he'd come up in like a mafia show or a mafia game or something, and his name is Joey Two Dicks. You know? So, something along those lines. Hey, you wanna talk to the hey, you wanna talk to Joey Bostarino? You're gonna have to show some respect to the boss. <laughs> I've been traveling around the country, eh? You know what I mean? I'm gonna make wokeness sleep with the fishes. Tony Pastorino sends his regards. Yes, he said woke industrial complex. He does think that like the left is, is there underground in the trenches. Think. Think. Like p crafting wokeness in it like it, it, like making they they uh, refurbished butter churning stations into estrogen uh creation stations they have like bathtub testosterone there draining it into like loop-de-loop -loop, twirly straw pipes and different colors and then there's like a uh like and then they have some gender fluid and they pour a little bit of soy in there and it goes <laughs> And smoke comes up, and it's sparkling. And in the smoke, you can see, um, you can see a drag queen wearing three inches of fabric with a twenty-seven inch long dick wrapped around their waist like a Saiyan tail, uh, performing beat for beat Lady Gaga's dance perfectly from her Poker Face album tour back in the early two thousands, and it's just, uh, and it's just like it's. It's crazy. They're underground. They're doing it. They're they're ironing. They're they're ironing their uh their antifa flags, and <laughs> and they're and they're crafting bike locks. You know what I mean? They're in there pouring cement into milkshakes. They're hardening their fists to punch more Nazis. It's crazy. They they are in the Willy Wonka woke factory. They're pressing uh, uh stickers. It's it's crazy. It needs to stop. And the worst part about it is, you know why Antifa always wears black? You know where they get all that black clothing from? It starts off as white. They have black people there kept, um, kept captive in their underground chamber. And they milk black people. They milk them. They milk them. They milk them of their melanin. And then they take the melanin, all right, that they milk from the black people. And then they put it into big tubs and then they dip their clothes in it and it comes out as black, just like that. It's, it's really high concentration. And that's why and that's where they get all their clothes from. That's the initiation process for when it comes to um, being an anti for a super soldier. It's it's scary. It really is. It's scary stuff. I almost got milked for my melanin, too. I'm glad I escaped when I had the chance. Things could have turned out different for me. We need to stop the woke industrial complex. You won't imagine what it's doing to this country. It's people. Yo, remember when I told you that we were going to check up, uh, check up, check back up on Kimberly Guilfoyle? I was not lying to you. Okay, we are. And Kimberly Guilfoyle used to be working in the White House. This is what she's been reduced to. And I want to make sure that you guys know about Gold Code. Don Jr. has been talking about it. Gold and silver can protect your retirement savings from inflation and dollar devaluation. And owning tangible, physical, inflation hedging gold and silver can help diversify your portfolio. You've got to have a diversified portfolio. Everybody knows that. And Gold Co. has helped thousands of Americans diversify and protect their retirement savings. So, yeah, it's she's gone from working in the White House to having to sell um, geriatric people gold bars because... <laughs> Because he can't, she doesn't have any more sponsorship prospects. Nobody wants to work with her. She has no marketable skills. Yeah, now she's working for the Jewelry Network. It is the good ending. You're right. This is absolutely the good ending. You gotta, you gotta get, this will help your portfolio. Money will devalue inflation. Will it, gold doesn't go everywhere, anywhere. Everybody loves gold. I love gold. This is so sad. Yeah, the only thing worse is if she would be selling like crypto or Herbalife or something. My God. Yo, can you imagine if she became like a door to door Avon saleswoman? Oh, man. How sad. Support comes.
companies who support you. It makes sense, doesn't it? Instead of supporting woke companies who hate you and use your money to further their political agenda. Buy my gold. So go to Kim's Metals. It's kind of catchy. Dot com to learn more. That's Kim's Metals. What do you think? Uh, how much of a scam do you think this is? So I typed in Kim's Metals and it sent me here. Why Gold Co? Industry leader. Precious metals, IRAs. <laughs> Wait, so instead of having like a bank account, you keep, you pretend that you're like Fort Knox and you keep your retirement savings and just like a hunk of metal under your bed? <laughs> oh no, this is not good. Best value? Ten. Oh yes, the best value would be for you to buy ten thousand dollars or more of. Oh, free silver! Oh, you get silver for free, and it's worth ten thousand dollars. That's the world's greatest. That that's a great deal. That's crazy. Free and free shipping. Access to li library of retirement resources. What does that mean? Highest price buyback guarantee. Oh, hey, look, it's Garrett's Guilfoyle. I partnered with Goldco because I believe in their values and in diversification. Did you, do you think that she just learned what the word diversification was like the other day? And now, and now she just keeps saying, you need to diversify, diversify, diversification is good. Me, when I, me, when I take the first three classes of economics 101. Hey, have you guys heard about diverse, diverse, the true, like the diversity in your investments is the only diversity that these people actually care about. Oh, it's the only diversity that they like. Yeah, I don't put, I don't diversify any of my money. All of my money at this moment in time is in uh, uh, crypto. It's in dildo coin. If I'm going to be honest, and it's going to the moon, the chocolate moon, that is. Oh, and you know, you can't have a conservative gathering without a creepy old man saying how much he would like to have sex with the uh, with uh, women in the audience. You know, you can't you you thought that you get out of here with there without there being at least one of these guys. What are you stupid? What do you think? I'm stupid. Come on. Yeah, let me just say this. This can never be said at a Democrat gathering. Look at all the beautiful women here. Women. Especially my wife. Well, thank you. We need to jump right in. <laughs> she, wow, thank you. She, he was like, look at all of these beautiful women. And then he was like, oh, wait. Uh, and my wife. I, I love my wife. Thank you, wife. Okay, yeah, we need to move on. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> no my girly did not enjoy that my wife thank you now let's move on let's move on very quickly my wife is beautiful i i love my wife oh look at this one movement by the way have you ever seen me imitate a liberal you oh, want to see me imitate a liberal it's very easy. You can do this at home, you know. There I am. So just so everyone knows. And, and let me say this. Wait, we have banned masks from our homes. Let me say this. I'm for masks if liberals will just wear them. It's fine by me. All right. They self-identify. Hey! My pronouns are all uh, fuck you, uh, fuck you. My mask is kiss my ass. Hey, one mask, two mask. Doctor Fauci. <laughs> uh, squawk, I'm a liberal. Squawk, I'm a liberal. Get your booster. Oops, I dropped my pronoun. <laughs> one mask, two mask. Just in case you weren't laughing, let me explain the joke so you can uh, so you can finally laugh. I love it. it's it's my favorite joke. Hey, look at me! I I don't want to spread germs everywhere. What am I? Some sort of liberal? Okay. How many liberals does it take to kiss my ass? Um, the same number of uh, genders there are. Hey, hey, gotta hey. <laughs> 
Oh man. Oh man. It's okay. I don't need a shot. I uh self-identify as a COVID shot, so I don't need it. Hey, hey. That's the same joke. Oh, um, uh, well, uh, uh it. <laughs> what about? Hey, so I was uh walking down the street the other day, and I was like, I, I saw some kids in the neighborhood, and they said, "Step on a," and one kid. And stepped on it in a pothole and the other said step on a crack break your birthing person's back hey hey oh god oh man oh <laughs> we're making it happen oh it's coming <laughs> oh it's coming um uh pronouns of kiss me <laughs> Uh, uh, so I, I was, I was at, um, uh, Walmart the other day and, uh, the, one of the, the two cashiers that they have left since they replaced all the lines, uh, with self-checkout, uh, and, and I, and I rang up all of my frozen pizzas cause Pizza Hut is uh, woke and M&Ms so I can, uh, burn them when I get home for being woke. I, I I put in my card and she said, I'm sorry, sir, but your card's been declined. And I said, how can it be declined? It's valid. I, I self-identify as having an extra 1259. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, Egg donor sounds cooler than birthing person. That's true. I like Vagoober Haver, if I'm going to be honest. Pussy enjoyer. This is torture. <laughs> what do you hate? Oh, you want you want to see his com? You want his comedy back? Well, which one is it? You ought to pick someone. Liberal. <laughs> look at this liberal. <laughs> can't pick a same. Look, they can't. Uh, they can't even. Uh, uh, uh you you know. You know, um, going out to eat with a liberal is worse than uh, going out to eat uh, with a woman. At, at least a, a woman d doesn't know what they want to eat. A liberal identifies as a different, as, as wanting different food every time I, we turn the corner. Eh? <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry. I hope you, I hope you find it in your heart to forgive me. I could listen to this all night. I'm a psycho. <laughs> I'm, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. Listen, it's not, it's, we don't need to talk about me anymore because there's a, there's a, a, a very important guest that, that was at CPAC that we need to talk about. And you may know him. You may love him. It's our good friend from Sao Paulo. Brazil. I did not force anyone to be vaccinated in Brazil. Hey. She's not gonna she's not gonna see the end of the week. Bolsonaro's there. Poor lady is not going to see the end of the week. I feel so bad for her. This is, this is just a COVID hot box. It's so over. It's so over for these people. Oh no, dude. Yeah, he should have. So I heard somebody say this and, and I thought it would have been, it would have been super cool. Can you imagine if uh, Bolsonaro came out? Can you imagine if Bolsonaro came out in a, <laughs> like entered the stage in a hospital bed? Like he gets pulled in and he gets like pushed in on a gurney and then they're like, oh, what happened to him? And he like sits up like the undertaker and then pulls and then pulls off like the oxygen mask. And he's like, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Woo! Oh, we love that. That's my Brazilian president. That's him. Yeah. He, he identifies as COVID free. <laughs> it's him. He's here, Jair 
Bolsonaro, Brazil mentioned. Oh, you got, oh, you finally got unmuted. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you weren't, where are my mods? Where are my mods? Do I have mods in here? Where are my mods? But he blowing hit back. I have that stuck in my head now. I think it's, I think it's remarkable. I think it's remarkable that she went up on stage and said, I bet he's blowing his back. Okay, never mind. Well, fuck me then. You know what? I got this. Based. That he blowing his back. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. If you're enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button. If you don't, it'll make Boo very sad. I know a bunch of you who are watching are not subscribed. Join the frenzy. You won't regret it. <laughs> Thank you, Boo.